So like I said, got a bunch of Project Moist footage left over from last year, and I want to finally publish this stuff and just get it out of the way. Now, since it's been a while, it's been a hot minute, let's have a bit of a recap. So, it's the year of our Lord, 2021. Babby is coming uh, May 2021. Now, Babby need moist air. We get HEPA air filter with humidifier function, but the damn thing needs water added like three or four times a day. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. So Chili gets this genius idea. He's going to automate that shit. You know, a programmer, right? I can do this. I'm going to create a huge external reservoir that fills the original reservoir automatically every time it gets, you know, a little low. And thus, Project Moist was born. Now, these first few clips I'm showing here are a continuation of the previous ones that have already been released. They were taken maybe a day or two after the advent of Babby, while Babby and Mommy were still in hospice. So first basic test here with the humidifier. Got it hooked up. Uh, got the sensor running here while the humidifier is running. And what I wanted to check was I wanted to check when the humidifier detects a uh, low fluid level how does that look on our uh, on our read sensor so and it doesn't look good I'm just gonna tell you because the read sensor is still closed it opens when the level goes low enough but this thing has already detected a low level so it's not going to be pumping water level is not going to get any lower but this one still hasn't detected a level, so it's not going to, in actual operations, not going to be able to, uh, you know, add more fluid. So what I need to do is I need to make it so that this one trips just before this one. That way, this thing will keep sucking water. It'll keep it's it, when you nut, but she keeps sucking. Um, you nut, yeah. So you can see here. It's still detecting, the switch is still closed. This is the water level approximately at which the uh, uh, the humidifier says, nope, we're done, we're out of water. So that means that if you see, if you see here, I, I basically calibrated it so that when this thing almost perfectly bottoms out, that's when the switch goes. So when I push this down to the very bottom, let me just reset it. Uh, now I'm going to push it down to the very bottom. I can get my finger. Yeah, and it goes off. So, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut the mustard here. That does not match up with the humidifier. So we got to uh, we got to go with the flow on this one. So I'm going to move this switch and remove this reed. Position it up a little bit so that it just about um, opens at this level. Try a little higher than this level. We want to give a little bit of tolerance between the, uh, you know, the calibration of the humidifier when it detects the low level and our system. All right, so calibration complete. This one is saying, yep, yeah, we got liquid. This one is saying, yep, yeah, we got liquid. So when this one goes out, let's see if this one also goes out. When you, guys, stop me, stop me if you heard this one before. When you nut, but she keeps sucking. You see this, boys? This is the smell of success, probably. Still testing, but uh, yeah, I got my, I uh, got my state machine all figured out with like interrupts and stuff, and it's you know, it's, it's not pretty, but it, it works probably. Now, took a little debugging. Um, so actually, this uh, this bad boy came in handy. I'm glad I set this up, even though I didn't. I wasn't sure if I was going to need it. It was fun to set up, and turns out it was helpful too to debug my state machine. So looks like it's going good so far. I'm just waiting for the uh, for the for the drain the drain weight. So when the when the read kicks out, 
meaning the level goes below where my read stops, uh, basically when the, the circuit opens, the, uh, the humidifier still has some level remaining. So I want it to suck down to the minimum. So I timed it, and the time between when the humidifier runs out and my read switch activates is about 8 minutes. So that's the, uh, that's the drain wait state. It's waiting for 8 minutes after it detects a low level on my sensor. And then after that, it goes into fill, fill low, and then, I don't know, fill low and fill low short. I feel like one of these is maybe not necessary. The re look into that. But anyways, we fill, and in the fill low state, we're filling, but we're waiting for the read switch to close again. If it doesn't close within a certain amount of time, that means either we're out of water, or something has gone terribly wrong, in which case we would hit into maintenance. Otherwise, if the switch closes, as usual, then we time to the remaining fill. Because you can fill a lot more than uh, af just until the read switch closes. So, yeah. Fairly simple state machine, but still fairly complex when you factor in all the different interrupts that I gotta deal with. Timers and edges and all sorts of good stuff. So, we got that done. And we're just waiting for this to kick there we go, we're running in, uh, we're running in operation here. It has filled the tank, it has stopped at the appropriate time, and it's waiting for the level to go low enough to, uh, start the process all over again, so. Yeah, it's looking good, so, I mean, I still don't have it, uh, not at the point where I want to transfer it to a final PCB or anything. Uh, I still want to do a lot of tests, want to do a lot of, uh, tweaking of timings and stuff like that but looks like it's working still not gonna I still don't trust it enough to leave it running when I'm not you know within uh, earshot so I can hear the solenoid turn on I can run quickly and make sure it doesn't flood my house but but it does appear to be working properly well interesting problem I had here was the way I was routing the tube into that hole you remember the hole in the uh, in the catch reservoir? And it was the way I routed it, it, it had a propensity to kink. So what I had was I tested it at one, basically one arrangement, one threading of the the uh, tube. I tested I said, okay, it takes about 60 seconds to fill the tank. Then I did it again, it flooded my floor because it, it like filled in maybe like 40 seconds. And uh, then I did it again and it barely filled at all and I realized that I don't have any kind of consistency with respect to this hose. So I, instead of threading it through, I don't know if you, I don't want to pull it open because it's running right now. But instead of threading it through on the right hand side and going down, I thread it, I take a little long detour so that there's less of a bend in the, uh, in the tubing. The tubing has to get scrunched down to go into that little hole. So it's already in a situation where it likes to kink and so any sharp bend is going to kink and pinch it off so uh, in the future I might enlarge that sinkhole so that it doesn't have to get pinched when it goes in and that would uh, enable it not to kink as much I might also recut the hose I got a lot more than I needed I got like 10 meters of it so I might cut another length that's a little longer that'll give me a little more leeway so I got ideas, but right now it seems to be looking good, so we'll try this out for a while. Try it out, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this uh, so it's not sitting on a table here blocking the path. I will put it in a little cardboard box. It will live probably on top of the reservoir for a while while I test things out. I have a nice setup that I can easily, you know, remove the, uh, the breadboard and program it, change some settings. Or even possibly hook up the uh, hook up the Pico and do a little in situ. Uh, what do you call it? diagnostics? Yeah, so we'll see. But it's looking good right now. It's looking very good. Very happy. And one day before Babby come home, Daddy Chili put the breadboard in a super professional enclosure and mounted it on top of the reservoir. It ran for about two months 
and then the weather got so goddamn humid here that we didn't need the humidifier anymore. And after that, I decommissioned Project Moist Mark 1 and started R&D for Mark 2, which I will detail in coming videos. Stay tuned.